let's uh, go ahead to uh, continue uh, our new adventure. We talk about the common source amplifier, right? And it's time to review, right? Because uh, it's midterm. Why it is called common source? Uh, because the this is, for example, this is MOS. And if I give you a PMOS, you should not feel uh, confused, right? Uh, you should be very confident just to follow the procedure. I see this is MOS. Then I say this is gate. This is drain. This is source because the drain of the MOS has higher potential. But if it is a PMOS, opposite, the drain of the MOS has a lower potential. If I give you something like this, you should be very confidently say that this not this one looks like a source follower also. We in is here, we out is here, right? Because this is PMOS, so this is source, this is drain, right? Because we know that if we try to draw the small signal circuit of this uh, circuit of this PMOS circuit is exactly the same as this one. And then if you try to solve the KCL, KVL, you get exactly the same answer. Do you agree with this? Is this clear? This is very important, right? I, we don't want to go to solve small signal circuit again if we already learned the topology. Right? If we have not learned, we, want to, we need to spend time. There's no choice. But if we learn already, I hope you are able to map this topology to what you have learned. And because of this, and then we check the cheat sheet. I hope that, um, yes, last time actually I was in rush, a student came to me, asked uh, why I have the gain like this, right? But my point is, uh, we did that in the previous lecture, we tried to solve the small signal, right? So what is the input impedance of this uh, circuit? You should be very familiar with this already, right? We're going to have midterm on Monday. What's the input impedance? Or what is the definition of the input impedance, first of all? The resistance at the input terminal? Yeah, the resistance at the input terminal. And what is it? How do you measure it? That's all I always ask you to do. How Now I ask you to measure. I'll give you $1 million. Measure it for me. I know you. then you know how to measure. You ground the uh, DC voltages and input. You ground the input to measure the input impedance? No, the VDD. That, that is, okay. You're talking about a small signal. Yeah, okay. that's okay. But I, a very simple question. I give you something. Measure the input impedance. What will you do? Apply voltage, measure the current. Apply voltage yeah. measure the current, right? So is we in over? Uh, in except that we have some special condition. What is that? Related to the output, you want to open or short the output? If you forgot, that is fine, right? Uh, one way to remember this is that I want the next stage to be ideal. So it has infinite output impedance which means I want to open the output. Otherwise, at least you need to know that you need to check what is the condition. Either Google or look at your cheat sheet, right? That's the minimum thing. It's okay that you don't know something, but you need to know that you don't know something. That is the main point as an engineer, right? Do not just go in, yeah, you must be we in uh, divided by I in, done, no, right? You know that there is something, right? We need the I out equals to zero, right? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. What do you think? You want it to be ideal. So that you want the next stage to be ideal. You're driving the next stage. The next stage is ideal means the next stage has infinite impedance. Then how much current do you deliver to the next stage? Zero. Yeah, that's a good question, right? If you don't ask this question, you will always mess up whether you're talking about R out or I out, right? So what is the input impedance? Now, now I give you the this circuit, you measure, you apply a voltage and measure the current. What is the input impedance? 
Yeah, it should be infinite, right? Because there's no current going in. Looks very weird. And that's why, because it is weird, that's why you need to follow the rule step by step. Treat, treat yourself as a computer. These are all the definition, right? Okay. What is the output impedance of this circuit? Again, what is the definition? Okay, be careful what I'm asking. Z out, output impedance. So how do you measure? V out over I out, when V in is zero. This is just a definition, right? But you need to know that you need to check this before you jump into solving the problem. I see you all got pretty good grade on assignment one, right? <laughs> then you should have known this very well. Okay. So, so, okay. What is the gain of this circuit? GM, R out, parallel RD. Do I miss anything? Negative, right? This negative is important. Now, how do I get this? Because we try to solve the small signal, right? And if you forgot, go back to read the slide. See how we solve it. But the point is, as an electrical engineer, you should actually have this in your head already. Right? You should be very familiar with this. What is the gain? What is the input impedance and output impedance? But you see that actually some of us still even, uh, I mean, don't have a concept. I mean, uh, how to say, have the visual concept of what we are asking about, right? How to say this? Like, like I give you a resistor. When I, when I see what is the resistance, I think all of you will just... We have the visual concept right away. Apply the voltage, get the current. The ratio between the voltage and current is the resistance. That is the characteristic, right? So now I ask you the input impedance. I hope you have this visual concept. Just like I, okay, apply a voltage to the input, measure the current. The ratio is the input uh, impedance, right? And GM, what is GM? Anyone? Yes, transconductance. That's a good start. But what is GM by definition? It's small signal, but what gain? When you say gain, right? Good. That's a good point. But now I want to calculate. Tell me, what gain are you talking about? Okay. He said it's his relationship between the delta ID and delta VG. That is the gain. But what divided by what? Delta ID VG, delta VG, right? Because delta VG divided by ID is ohm. It's not going to be Siemens, right? It's not conductance. Is that okay? Right, so there are many steps we can make mistakes. But at each step, check yourself, ask yourself, does that make sense, right? Does the unit make sense? And that is why it's called transconductance, because it's from the uh, gate to the drink, so it's trans, okay? So that is common source amplifier. Oh, I'm recording. Okay, then we talk about common source with degeneration, right? We also spend a lot of time to derive the equation. I hope you know how to derive it. But after that, you copy to a cheat sheet. Now you should tell me what is the input impedance of a common source with degeneration. Just look at this circuit. This is we in. What is the input impedance? Infinite. Why? 
because again, we I over I in, and it is to the gate. Current is zero. Is this okay? Yeah, because we're measuring apply voltage here. See how much current goes in, right? So this is the same. Even you add a resistor here. How about the? Okay, and I forgot to talk about the output impedance here. Uh, for the a little bit messy for the common gates, right? Do you what is the look, remember what's output impedance for common gates? R zero parallel R D, right? Because I ground this one, then this whole thing just now a transistor with the gates and source grounder, and I look down, it is R zero. I look up, it's R D, right? I have two paths to go to ground, so it is R zero parallel R D, right? What is the output impedance then for the common source with degeneration? Thank you. Uh, hold on. Uh, this is a very good uh, thing to discuss. Right? So someone proposed maybe they don't think carefully and then propose R zero plus R S parallel D, right? And now you say no, right? Why why it is not the case? Okay. So first he's think that's looking up this is R D. Great. And then now looking down, right? We see the drain. Then we attempt to we are tempted to say this is R zero. But when can we say it is R zero? Only when the gate and the source are grounded. Is the gate grounded first of all? Yes. Yes. Uh, someone say no. Of course, now I put we in right. But why do you say yes? Because that is the definition when you try to measure R out, you need to ground the input. So that is correct. Gate is grounded. How about the source? Is it grounded? Yeah. No. Okay, it is not. It is, it is connected to ground through the RS. That's why you cannot say this is R0. If this is R0, then you are correct. It's R0 plus RS. Uh, or even maybe not correct. I mean, this is different, difficult to say, right? But it is not R zero. So what should we do? Solve the small signal model. Draw the small signal model and solve it, right? And that's what we did in the last lecture. And what did we get? Do you remember? Yeah, that is how you solve it. But we don't want to solve now. I just want to give the final result. I don't think any of you, any, remember? Any of you? Okay, so it is R0, uh, 1, right, times 1 plus GM RS plus RS. Very good. This is what we get when we're looking down. Why? Just because we solve it. We already solved the small signal model and then the whole thing parallel RD. Right? So we don't want to make this mistake again. Right? We, we do not just go down and say, this is, looks like R0, this looks like RS, I just add them together. No, because the so-called impedance, it must be that you apply a voltage and test how much current. Right? For example, I always say like this table. I try to push table to, to this side. If I close my eye, and one of you just came here, right? Either push against me or help me to pull it, I will feel a very different weight of the table. If you help me to pull it, I didn't know that you are pulling. I, I will say, I feel this table is very light, right? And because the amount of effort I put on this table uh, need to, only to be very tiny in order to move it. 
Or you push against me, I will say, wow, this table is really heavy. You know, I push so hard, it doesn't move a little bit. But it's just because you were standing here, it just pushed me back. This is the whole system like this. Because the transistor is active, we have a lot of feedback, current source or whatever. I apply a voltage here, I can get very tiny current going in. Then I will say, this has a very huge resistance when I look into it. Or maybe I get a lot of current, then I will say, oh, this has a very small impedance to me. Right? And that is the meaning of this impedance, the apparent impedance, what you feel. Okay? So our goal is to find out when I look down, what is the apparent impedance that presents to me the electron or the current. Okay? So I cannot see from here because I need to solve the whole circuit to know what is the apparent impedance, right? I, I'm not good enough. I need to solve a lot of equation. But after I solve it, I know that turn out it is R0 times GMRS. Very huge impedance. It's not just R0 plus RS. It's RS times this whole thing plus RS. And why? Just because now someone is pulling the table or pushing the table to me, against me, right? With some, following some rules, okay? So, uh, so this is uh, very important in terms of the uh, uh, common source with degeneration. So today we go to another topic, common gate amplifier. Again, we repeat what we have been doing before. 